Hello, in this video, we're going to give a proof. So the statement is the following, let Y be a subset of the metric space capital X. Then X in capital X is adherent to Y, if and only if there is a sequence in Y that converges to X. So we do need a couple definitions, but the one I'm going to refresh here is this one here, adherent to Y. So recall a point X in capital X, here capital X is a metric space, is adherent to Y if for all R greater than zero, the open ball centered at X of radius R intersected with Y is non-empty. So that's a very important definition that we need in order to go through this proof. All right, let's just jump into it, proof. So let's do this direction first. So we'll start by assuming that we have a point X and X that's adherent to Y. So I'll say suppose X in capital X is adherent to Y. And now we have to basically give a constructive proof. We have to construct a sequence in Y that converges to X. So we somehow have to use the fact that it's adherent to Y. So what I am thinking is we can do the following. So since X is adherent to Y, for all N greater than or equal to one, we have that the open ball centered at X of radius one over N intersected with Y is not the empty set. So see how I did that? I, I used N instead of you know R because I wanna create a sequence. So that means that this set is not empty. So that means that there exists X sub N in this intersection. So in particular, it's in this set here. So X sub N is in this set here. And thus, we have the distance between X and X sub N less than one over N. That's what it means for X sub N to be in this set. Let's think about what we've done. So for each N greater than or equal to one, we have a sequence whose terms are labeled X sub N that satisfy this condition. So let's just reiterate that. Thus, we have a sequence, X sub N, and let's just emphasize that it works for each N. So it runs from one to infinity with the property that, let's be really clear here, the distance between X and X sub N is less than one over N. Well, clearly this sequence converges to X because if we let N go to infinity, we basically get that this is less than zero, so this must approach zero. So let N approach infinity. So we end up with DX X sub N less than one over N approaching zero. So that means that the limit as n approaches infinity of the distance between x and x sub n is equal to zero. And so that means that x sub n converges to x. So thus, x sub n converges to x. Sorry, I know you couldn't see for a moment. I always have a hard time looking at the camera and what I'm writing. So now let's go the other way. So now we have to assume that we have a sequence in Y that converges to X, and we have to show that X is adherent to Y. So suppose that we have a sequence X sub N that converges to in Y that converges to X. Then basically what's going to happen is every single open ball 
uh, centered at x is going to have points of the sequence. And so let me say that intuitively, let me explain it intuitively, and then we'll be a little bit more rigorous. So if we have an open ball here, say it's centered at x, and x sub n is approaching x, so let's, here, here's some of the points of x sub n. So no matter what open ball you pick, if you pick a really big one, it's certainly going to have points of x. What about really small ones? Well, a sequence is converging to x, so it gets as close as, as you want it to be. So no matter what open ball you pick, you're going to have points in that open ball. So when you intersect it with y, it's going to be non-empty, so x is going to be adherent to y. That's what it means, right, to be adherent to y. If every open ball uh, um, centered at x of positive radius um, contains uh, points, uh, that are in Y, so the, the intersection here is not empty. So it's a sequence in Y, so the fact that it's in Y is clear, and this is going to be true because it converges to X. So let's go ahead and just maybe um, just justify it a little bit better. So what does this mean? Let's use epsilons here to justify it. So this means, so thus, so instead of saying for all epsilon, I'm going to say for all R just to match the definition here. Thus, for all r greater than zero, there exists a positive integer such that for all n greater than capital N, we have that the distance between x and x sub n is less than r. Okay, so that means that x sub n is in the ball centered at x of radius r. But x sub n is a sequence in y. But x sub n is also in y. So that means that x sub n is in the intersection of this ball centered at x of radius r intersected with y. So therefore the intersection is non-empty. Hence, this intersection of the ball centered at x of radius r with y is non-empty. So for all r greater than zero, we have that the open ball centered at x of radius r intersected with y is non-empty. That is precisely what it means for x to be adherent to y, right? A point x and x is adherent to y if this condition is satisfied. That's exactly what we have here, right? I mean, it's exactly that. So this shows x is adherent to y. And again, intuitively, um, it should make sense because no matter how close you get, right, let's just like pretend, pretend we're zooming in, you're always going to have points uh, in this ball. And that's because it's for all r, so you can make r smaller and smaller, so the ball can get smaller and smaller and smaller. If you're wondering about big balls, well, big balls, you can just make them big and they're going to contain everything, so it's no, it's no real issue. But yeah, pretty cool proof. Um, I hope this video has been helpful to someone who is working on mathematics. Good luck.